Uh, thanks for your time, Jack. Uh, um, Coach Vrabel was talking a little bit uh, earlier about uh, your your effort, your high mo- high motor. He says he's been impressed by that. Uh, I wonder if uh, if you know that's helped you catch up after missing some time being on the on the COVID list. And and do you feel like you've kind of caught up? Um, you know where everybody else was at this point. Um, I, I, no, I don't think I've caught up yet. Um, I think that you know it's tough because I've. I came into a new system with a new playbook, um, you know, new culture, everything. So to, you know, have to go into a quarantine after just arriving um, here, it was, um, you know, I felt like I was falling further behind than I already was in terms of just trying to catch up with everything they do here in the team. So, um, yeah, I felt like, uh, you know, the past couple of days have been good for me in terms of just trying to catch up and uh, trying to go into, um, you know, put in extra time, whether it be studying the playbook or, you know, walking through certain plays. And, um, you know, in terms of effort and high motor, you know, that's that's something that's just, that's kind of, I've brought that, you know, to football since I started playing. So it's helped me. Um, yeah, I guess it's helped me stay in the league. It's also helped me catch up when I have to, you know, I understand that I'm coming from a position where I'm a little bit behind. So I think that that kind of helps me probably, um, you know, I guess catch up with the rest of the team. Quick follow for you. Uh, you were a guy, obviously, that played with, with Vic Beasley. Uh, we've yet to see him, uh, you know, practice. But what were your impressions of him uh, in Atlanta, kind of, you know, uh, on and off the field as a, as a player and a person? Oh, he's, I mean, you know, he's a great person, man. He's one of the best, you know, Best people I know, he's, you know, great friend, great player. Um, he's, you know, on off the field, he's always giving back to the community. Um, you know, one of the most generous people I know. Um, on the field, you know, he's just very easy to work with. I think that, like, coming from here, coming from Atlanta, coming here, you know, I knew as soon as I got here that I knew that, you know, he would have fit, he would fit into the culture here because, he just gets along with everybody and I think people get along with him. And um, I know that here they can't wait to get him on the field. I know he's, you know, eager to come back. And um, I think that, you know, is on the field, off the field, he's he's pretty similar in a lot of ways, man. He, you know, he very, he listens, he plays hard, he's gives back. He just, you know, the team guy. Uh, Jim? Jack, what do you what do you think about the defensive line here that you're going to be playing and some of the guys you'll be playing with? And how do you think the fit is here in Tennessee for you? Oh, I, I think it's great, man. I think that um, you know it's funny coming here. It's um, you know I'm probably the lightest person weight wise, just uh, you know on the defensive line. Like everybody's probably got around about ten, maybe fifteen pounds on me, so. It was, um, yeah, coming here, you know, I, I see the the style of play here and I've, I've worked, you know, with coach uh, Terrell Williams. Um, he was my defensive line coach my first two years in the league coming in as a rookie. So, you know, I had history with him. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I've played with Daquan. I went to the same school. I went to Penn State with Daquan Jones and meeting the rest of the guys. It's been good. You know, there's, there's a certain culture on the D-line, the type of guy they have, this you know, a straight up guy, solid people. They're not, you know, hard to work with. Um, everybody kind of supports each other in a certain way. And I think on the field, you know, we all value hard work and we all value, you know, effort. Things that basically help a D-line perform to the level that we need to. And um, and we all hold each other accountable. And I think that we're going to help each other kind of progress to where we need to be based on, you know, coming in at such a hard um, a year this year, having no preseason games and no real measurement to kind of evaluate each other by or to evaluate ourselves by, it's, um, you know, I, I think it helps having a D-line that we keep each other accountable. And, and one more for me, I mean, are, are you regarded or you consider yourself a pretty patient person? And what was it like at the start of camp where I know you wanted to be out there and play, but you kind of had to wait until you were in the clear? How would you handle that part of it? Yeah, it was tough, man. At first, you know, it was just tough kind of, you know, being in that position, I guess. The, when you told that you have to go into quarantine, it's like a shock. And then at first you can kind of, 
get pretty down on yourself or just be kind of worried that I was worried at first that I was going to fall too far behind. And um, coming back from that, I felt like I was over worrying. You know, I felt like I was stressing too much. I, you know, coming back, the coaches, Coach Ray was, they, you know, they take it in stride and they tell you, you know, they're glad that we're back. And I was, and they made me feel better about coming back. And, um, you know, come, being able to come back from that, I felt like, you know, I'm, I'm fairly patient, but I also worry about the normal things people do, you know, when they were at work, you know, and that's falling behind or not being able to perform the level they need to. And, um, you know, it's been a, my third day practicing now with the team. And, you know, first couple of days is rough coming back. It's I haven't played football in eight months. Um, you know, it's this the way this year has been going. I haven't been able to kind of practice uh, football drills, but now on my third day, I felt a lot better today. So it was um, it was nice to be back out there with the team. Uh, Darren Beauclair. Jack, given the restrictions this summer, were you able to do as much MMA training as, as you had hoped? And, and talk a little bit about what MMA does for you as a football player. Oh man, that's, you know, MMA is my favorite, uh, you know, that's probably my favorite, that's my favorite sport. Um, you know, a lot of my close friends are in the sport. And, uh, you know, I love training in that area. I think it relates to defensive line and offensive line so closely that I think everybody who plays on the, the trenches can benefit from it. I, you know, of course, this off season has been a little different for everybody. I haven't been able to do any of that close contact, uh, you know, uh, training or anything like that along the lines of that. Everyone who I'm close with who's in the MMA world, their gym has been closed down. And, uh, you know, friends back in California or my, my cousin in D.C., that they had to joke, they had to close their gyms down. So, you know, it's been tough for that community. And, I, you know, I'm just speaking from uh, from what they've told me. But, you know, I think that the training overall is something that, I, you know, I hope to pick back up soon. I don't know if I'll be able to do it this season, but in the off season next year, for sure, I'll be back at it. Uh, Terry? What, Jack, what was it like, I guess, trying to stay plugged in via the Zoom meetings while you were in quarantine? And were you able to work out and condition at all to try to keep that at, at a respectable level? Um, it's tough, man. I'm, I can't lie. It's, you know, it's, I had just moved here, so I'm, uh, I haven't actually found a place like an apartment or a house yet that, I'm, that I can rent. I'm just in a hotel that the team put me in. So I was actually in a room the whole time so it was pretty tough to kind of get much activity in um you know all i have is some resistance bands so i really couldn't do much i was just trying to you know do push-ups sit-ups and things that would just try to at least get my heart rate up a little bit while i was stuck in uh, stuck in the room um as far as keeping up with the team meetings and stuff they would they would zoom me in it, uh you know they would uh link me in on zoom for some of the team meetings and defensive meetings and you know, it's not like being here, but I would say that, you know, it helps, you know, it helps seeing just being in the, I guess, involved in some way, in some form. And I would also kind of just study the playbook a little bit, just so I have an idea of what I'm coming back to, because, you know, if I come back with no idea, then it, it's just going to be, you know, eventually I'm going to have to do it one way or another. Uh, time for a couple more, uh, Teron. Yeah, Jack, when, when you were in Atlanta, you were kind of in a, a different situation where you had a defensive head coach, but, you know, he split the play calling duties to, to two other guys. How, how did that process work? And why, why do you feel, why would you say, like, things got better defensively, you know, when that happened? Um, it's, that's tough to say. I, you know, I can't uh, completely answer that question just because, you know, I'm, I'm not up there in, in the front office or I'm not up there with the coaching stuff. You know, I'm not entirely sure. And being down on the field, being especially on a defensive line, you you don't always know what necessarily changes behind you, what coaches have made, what changes they've made as a coaching staff. Um, so I couldn't really give much detail on it uh, just based on what they may have changed in like a scheme or something like that. But I think that... Um, you know, we had a point in the season where things weren't going well. And as a team, we were ma we, we managed to turn it around. Defensively, we turned it around. And, I mean, offensively, too. So it was um, 
it was a morale boost and it's hard to say essentially what we changed especially being in my position but you know it's this kind of like the way this game goes and it's like playing in this league for eight years going on nine years it's you'd understand there's it can take one thing that can change the entire season for a team and that might be a coaching change it might be a scheme change it might be a responsibility for someone to pick up but you know this this the game one small detail can change the entire team and the culture and that can build momentum and once you have momentum then you know, there's the sky's the limit. Thank you, uh, Paul. It was your football club back in London, Jack? You, you a Chelsea guy? No, man, I'm, a, I'm an Arsenal guy. What? Dad, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your connection to the team and and uh, how much you grew up with them? Well, it's funny because my 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 brothers and my my dad they're Liverpool. They were Man- Manchester United fans. And uh, I guess I just grew up. I grew up in north northwest London. I guess the closest team to me was Queens Park, but nobody. I'm not gonna support them because they're they're not <laughs> they're not really in the Premier League. So the closest team to me was really Arsenal or Tottenham. And then I guess most of my friends are just Arsenal fans. So I kind of just caught on with them early on, you know. And then I, I haven't followed it as closely of of late, like recently, but. You know, I've, um, yeah, I mean, I just claim Arsenal, man. I've always been a Gunners fan. Uh, Gentry? Yeah, Jack, how old were you when you moved to the United States? And how did that come about? When did you pick up American football? And I think I read somewhere that you used to be in a class with uh, Daniel Radcliffe, the Harry Potter actor. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's true. Um, yeah, it was true, like, for, for a little bit I was in a school with him, you know, he was always acting, so he wasn't really there the whole dinner you know, that much. But um, I, yeah, I came over to the States when I was 16, uh, originally to play basketball. And um, I went to uh, St. Augustine Prep in New Jersey. And um, yeah, I moved in with the host family. They took, they took me in and um, yeah, man, when I was 16 and then that was a, my sophomore year. And then my junior year was my first year just kind of playing American football. I, I had never played football before. So I just kind of went to the high school. I went to the games after school. You know, I watched it. I play, I grew up playing rugby a little bit. So, you know, I felt like the contact wasn't a problem for me or, you know, I just had to learn the rules, to be honest. Um, and then so my junior year, I just went out for the team and, yeah, it took me. It probably, I probably didn't get the rules down while I was in high school. I really didn't understand all the rules until I got to college. But you know, the coach just kind of lined me up, told me what to do, and that's kind of how I. Uh, yeah, that's how I got introduced to it. To be honest. Uh, last one, uh, Eric. Hey, Jack. I, I just wanted to ask uh, about your accent. How much is it a, a point of conversation with? A new team and it does it take it t- sort of tend to take um you know new teammates by surprise um a little bit i think that it's it's tough you know because my my accent kind of um sometimes people will catch on to some words i say and they'll uh they'll be like what that is it uh we say and they won't understand what i'm saying and then i'll have to kind of almost adjust my accent so they understand what i'm saying um better so it's it's yeah it's always been an issue for me even you know obviously since I came to the country my accent was a lot stronger and then it over time it kind of faded a little bit now I go back to London and it's like everybody says I'm American so it's my accent got kind of caught in the middle where it's yeah I go to London I'm American I go to uh I go to uh I come over here people say I sound funny and then um yeah, man, it's, it's, it's stuck in a weird place, man. I'm just trying to hold on to what little bit of accent I've got left.